Hello, class. Mr. Stone here. What we have today... Uh, let me get the eraser going here. Writing this thing, I don't want to. Okay? What we have today is uh, another lesson from um, one of my students. It's a quick quiz they had. Um, and we're just going to go over that. How to solve it. Okay? Sometimes I don't like the terminology they use. Uh, like on this first one, I'm reading it. She already took the exam. Okay, but I'm reading it afterwards, and I'm reading it now. It says, a uh, delivery truck uh, has a crate filled with a large number of, large supply of laptops. The truck also contains smaller boxes, each filled with the same number of laptops. Same. There's a key there. Okay. How many laptops does the truck have to deliver with this current load? So they're actually showing, down the bottom they have number of boxes. See it right there? And over this side... They have number of laptops in each box. Okay, so kind of it kind of threw me off a little here. Okay, so the points they have is 18, 609, and they got 7, 301. Okay, so they're saying that there's seven boxes with 301 laptops in it, and then there's 18 boxes with 18809. Okay, so I, I was a little thrown off, okay? But they wanted to know how many they got to deliver. But they really don't have any place to put this question. They don't have any place to put the answer. So that threw me off, okay? But like, let's just go on with the questions they're asking, okay? So even though they ask this, they don't give you a place to put it. So that threw me off, okay? But hey, let's go on. So the, they want the audit peers, okay? So we got seven. I'm just going to write them in here. We got seven. And we got 301. 301. Then we got 18. And we got 609. And sure enough, those were drop downs. Okay? So that fits. Okay? So that's what they wanted there. Okay? Now it says use the situation and graph the answer to the question. How many laptops in each smaller box? Of course, I kind of thought it was 7 and 301. And, but when I'm doing the math, I'm really not coming up with any one of these answers here, okay? But, if you take the points, okay, let me write them down. I'm going to write them right on there. So, if you take 609, 609, minus 301, over 18, minus 7. Okay, those are your points. Equals, okay, I got 308 over 11 equals 28. Sure enough, 28 is one of the answers, okay? So that's how they did the solution for that, okay? So I was just a little thrown off by which one's got big boxes, which one's got little boxes. I really didn't quite know. But anyway, the answer is 28. I know it is, okay? Because that's the only answer I could come up with. That worked, okay? So, now, determine the y-intercept, okay? You can actually plug this back in and solve for y, but you know what I did here instead, okay? I looked here, right, and I got 70. I'm looking at the graph. So, you can solve it a couple ways. You can look at a graph, or you can do an equation and solve for the y-intercept by making x zero, okay? So, I looked at this, and I got 140, and I got 70, okay? Now... So I know in between here, okay, you got 70 numbers. So that means each one of these blocks is 35 numbers. So that here is 105. If they labeled all that. So I know it's crossing on 105. So let's see if 105 is one of the answers. And it is right here. Right here. 105. B. Crossing at 105. Okay. So I solved for that. That was relatively easy. Okay. But... You can do it by a formula and just let x equal zero and then solve for y. But sometimes if they give you the graph, it's easier looking at the graph. You can do that in two seconds and move on to the next one. Okay, that's what I advise. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay, now use this situation and graph to answer the following questions. Okay, how many laptops in each? Well, hey, we already figured that out. It's 28, 28 laptops in each. We did that, okay? 
It is in 28 boxes. You just read these, and some of them are silly, okay? 28 boxes of one laptop? No, nah, I don't think so. 105 boxes of one laptop? These are, these are silly answers, okay? So even if you didn't know how to solve this, you're now down to just two, okay? And you know 105, that's a huge number, okay? So there's 28, bo 28 laptops in each box, okay? Now, use the situation, graph the answer to the following questions, okay? Now, M, okay, M is the slope, okay? We already solved the slope. The slope is 28, okay? So that was all that was there, okay? We already solved that, okay? So sometimes they repeat the things, um, good or bad, if you solve it and you got the correct answer, it's good because then you just answer it again with the correct answer. But don't forget, if you solved it wrong, okay, you're answering incorrectly each time. So you either get all right or you get a whole bunch wrong, okay? So sometimes that's good or bad, but that's where it pays to be able to go back at the end of the test and double check all your work. Because, and keep that in mind, so if you go back and you check number three, I'll just use three, I'm not even sure which one it was that we solved 28 on, but say it was number three, and we came up with 28, and we didn't come up with 28 on the second time, we did a math error, you gotta start looking forward because you picked 28 again, okay? So, uh, good or bad, okay? Now, okay, now we, it's saying, uh, choose the function equation for this situation. Okay, so we know it's y equals m, x plus b, okay? I'm not even gonna look over the answers, but we know the slope was 28, remember? And we know the b was 105. And it's a positive 105, right? So hey, any of those answers look like that? Yeah, look at the second one here. Right there, okay? That's got 28. But, again, that's going in the assumption that we did math correctly before to get 28, that we looked at the graph before to get 105. If any of those things prove false, we could be picking the wrong answer for this one. So, like I said, you either get them all right or you can get some wrong and a lot wrong, okay, because you picked the wrong one, okay? So, when you double-check your work, if you come up with any error, make sure you didn't carry that error forward. Okay, now... Which one we have to do now? Number seven, okay? Okay, so let's see what we got here, okay? Now, this is a little different, okay? Because what they did is they gave you different points over here. See, right in here. They gave you different points, okay? So, they want you to uh, use the example to answer the questions. Choose the equation of the, uh, I'm not really sure what the rest goes, okay? But what they want you to do, they want you to solve, they want you to come up with, uh, um, oh, uh, slope, and they want you to come up with a y-intercept, okay? So we're gonna do it both, okay? So here's how we're gonna do this one, you ready? We'll set this up, and I'm gonna write, I'm just gonna rewrite these. Five, Give me one second there. Okay, so we're going to write five, negative, seven, point four. Okay, so we'll write that. Then we're going to write negative three and 23. Okay, so we're going to write x1 x1, y1, x2, y2, okay? So we already did that, okay? Now our formula is gonna be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? That's gonna equal slope, 
right? M. Okay, it's going to equal that. So hey, let's just plug in the values. Okay, I'm going to plug in 23 plus 7.4. Whoop, it should be 7.4 minus. Okay, it'll be plus pretty soon. Okay, like I said, I rewrote these beforehand, so I'm just kind of copying what I wrote so I didn't make any mistakes. So it's 23 minus a minus 7.4. That's how we get to the positive. Okay? Over negative 3 minus 5. What's this going to equal? Equals. Okay? So 23. Now we got a negative times a negative. What's that going to be a positive? So we get 23 plus... 7.4 over negative 3 minus a, a 5 is going to be a negative 8. Okay? So we got that. Okay? So now we're going to end up with 30.4 over negative 8 equals negative 3.8 okay so we get negative 3.8 is the slope okay so now if we look at these answers they gave us I'm going to rule out a couple of them okay we know the formula is y equals mx plus b okay we know the slope is the m okay so we're looking for what's in front of the x okay and it's got to be negative 3.8 Okay, so we only got that one to choose from, and we only get this one to choose from. These two, I'm going to cross them right out. I'm not even going to look at them no more. Okay, so now, what you got to look at now, okay? Now, where does it cross the y-intercept? Does it cross at 26.4? Does it cross at 11.7? Okay, so now you got to solve for that, okay? Depending on how much time you have, okay? <coughs> you could do a simple graph because you can solve by a graph, okay? So if they gave me graph paper, I'd actually solve by the graph. It might be faster, okay? If not, we're going to solve by a formula too, okay? So here's what I do. I draw myself a quick graph, okay? And I point the points. So we got the X and we got a Y, right? Okay, so now we know one of the points is 5, and a negative 7.4 so that's right there okay now we know the other point is negative 3 over here not too far over negative 3 and 23 okay 23 okay so that line looks like this okay it's like that okay well they were asking you is The y right here on this first one, they were asking does it cross at positive 26.4? You know it doesn't because they're telling you it's already at the negative 3 position when it's at 23, so that can't be it. Okay, so that one's got to be wrong. Okay, so. Pat Stone, Pat Stone. So this has to um, cross at the 11.6. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick the 11.6. Okay. So that's the one I'm going to pick, okay? And um, that's what I'm going to pick my answer, okay? But you see how I did that? What I could have done is plugged in and, and did a formula, okay? And had, I'm just going to erase some things. No, I didn't get too much space, but I can do it, okay? I could plug it in. I could take one of the values. I could take... 23 as my y equals, we know it's negative 3.8, 3.8, okay, times negative 3 plus b. So now we just got to solve for b, okay? So negative 3.8 times negative 3 is positive 
11.4. And we get 23 equals plus B. So what you want to do now is subtract 11.4 from both sides. Subtract 11.4 from this side. And subtract 11.4 from this side. It's getting a little tight here, guys. Okay. So now, what that equals is 11.6. But you see how you can do it by solving it, by using the equation and just plugging in the values on, on your formula that you know is y equals mx plus b. You just plug in the values of the things you got and you'd come up with the same answer, the 11.6. But I felt the graph was a little faster because on the graph, I knew that the 23 was way up the top, okay? So that's how I'd go from now on, okay? It's just do whatever's fastest because you want to solve this and you want to move on to the next problem, okay? Now what they want, okay? So what they want now is they want you to substitute uh, 5 and negative 7.4 into that formula. So you're going to do the same thing. So we're going to put negative 7.4, 7.4, right, equals... Seven ninths, seven ninths. Now, they already told you, you already know the X is five over one plus B. Okay, so, because they told you what the X, here, the, I'm going to write it right up here, five and negative 7.4. So we know this is the X and that's the Y, okay? So we just plugged it in here. This is where the Y is. The formula is Y equals MX plus B, okay? So we're solving for B, okay? So what we have here is negative 7.4, 0.4 equals, now we multiply. Seven ninths times five ones is 35 ninths, 35 ninths, okay? 35 ninths. But you know what I didn't like? I didn't like having a fraction and having a decimal. So what I did is I took the 35 nines, 35 nines, and I broke that into a decimal, and it's 3.8, okay? It equals 3.8, okay? So I did that. That was a little easier for me, so that way I'm working with decimals, or I'm not working with a decimal and a fraction, okay? So now all I did, okay, was I took the 7.4, 7.4, and I subtracted 3.8. But what I come up with, right, is 11.28, okay? But they, they don't have that as an answer, okay? So, but none of these other ones really fit at all, okay? So I picked 11.6, okay? I don't know why they were a little off of mine, okay? But that's the answer, okay? I got 11.28, but they got 11.6 is what they wrote down. So I don't know if that's a, a typo on their part, okay? But it is 11.6. I know it is, okay? So I'm sticking with that, okay? Now, let's see what our next one is, okay? Number 10 we're working with. Okay, so now what they want to know, okay? Um, write the equation for the linear line that passes through the points... Twelve and negative two point three. Okay, so it's y equals m x plus b. But they're telling you that the slope is seven ninths. Okay, and it's a positive seven ninths. So what we got here, right, is we know the slope is seven ninths. So we know it's not ten. So we can cross this one off, and we know it's not negative ten. We can cross this one off. But now we're not a hundred percent sure where it crosses. Does it cross at negative 10 or does it cross at positive 10? Okay, I'm not really sure. They only gave me one point, so it's a little harder. You could take the riser run right, and probably work it on a, a graph piece of paper if you had it. Okay, but I don't have a graph piece of paper, so it's a little hard. Because you know the seven's the rise and the nine's the run. Okay, but I don't have that. Okay, so I'm just going to actually take and work on the formula. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the values. I'll let this equal x and this equal y, okay? 
So now I'm going to start with negative two-thirds. Okay, two-thirds. Then I'm going to go um, equals seven-ninths. I know that's the slope, right? Seven-ninths. I know the x is 12, right? 12. Over 1, I can make it 12 over 1, that's 12. Plus b. I'm solving for b now, okay? So how would I do this? This would cross this out. This would make this a 3, and that would make that a 4. So that makes that a 28 thirds, right? 28 thirds plus b. I got negative 2 thirds. Okay? Equals. So now, I got to get rid of the 28 thirds to get the b by itself. So I subtract 28 thirds from both sides. What I do to one side, I got to do the other side. Remember that. Okay. Two thirds minus 28 thirds is a minus 30 thirds. Divide that, I got a minus 10. Is one of those got 10? Yes, it does have a negative 10 right here. So that's my answer, okay? And that's how I solved that. But you see how I just plugged it into the equation? I let one, the X and the Y. I just plugged them in and solved for B, okay? The same way we do them all, okay? Now, find the B value. Uh, oop, nope, let's see if... Using the example, answer the question, find the B value, so do Y equals M. Okay, what they're lacking, okay? I already know this because I looked at another one. The fourth one down here is a negative 10. It's negative 10, okay? I don't know why it doesn't show it there, but that's what the answer is, okay? We just solved it, okay? It's not positive, it's negative. And I think that's it, guys. Okay? Um, yeah. Let's go. Now, what I do, okay, if this was my quiz, I'd go back and start at number one. Right here. Does 609, did I copy the numbers right? Okay? Is it 7 and 301? Is it 18 and 609? If that's correct, okay, I'd blow them up. Hey, is it right? Yeah, it looks right to me. Okay? But sometimes you can make an error there, okay? You can copy it wrong, okay? What I do now is I double check all my math. 609 minus 301, does it equal 308? Does 18 minus seven, does it equal 11? Did I divide correctly? Does it equal 28? And like I said, if you make a mistake on one of these, you might've carried it through. Like if it wasn't 28, hey, you might've carried that error through because a lot of these, they're looking for the same answer to a question before. Okay, um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll help my YouTube ratings. And if you know any students in school that are struggling with slopes and y-intercepts, please uh, show them this video because maybe this will help them and they'll get a better grade. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.